At the end of the last video, there was something a little odd because we were trying to change the AD of routes from 3113 uh, to 121. And we wrote distance 121, 3113, wildcard mask of all zeros, so it's got to match exactly. And we know that's where the route is coming from. We're looking at it, but the AD is not changing. And it's only been a couple of minutes, but I can run that command for you again. Actually, 2 minutes and 31 seconds to be exact. And that AD still hasn't changed. What we have to do with this command, first off, let me, let me go ahead and, and take that command out. And now I want to do a node distance 121, just in case that got left behind. Okay, that's fine. Current distance value not same as configured value. So we will check that out, make sure those commands are all gone in a second. OS could be a, OSPF could be a little tricky that way. What we have to do here is actually use the RID of router 3. Even though you would look at that and just say, oh, okay, you know, I'll just put the source address, which is 3113, doesn't work that way. And it doesn't tell you it doesn't work that way either. So let's do a conf t router ospf1 distance, and we want to set it to 121. Now we need the source address, and where are we going to get that? <clears throat> Pardon me. We could get it in a couple different places, but I'm going to get it in show IP ospf neighbor. And you can see the one that ends in three, the neighbor is act, the neighbor RID is actually 172.12.123.3 because I don't have a loop back on that interface. All right, so let's go under OSPF. It's distance 121, then 172.12.123.3. And then we got to put a wildcard mask in. And then we still have entries for access list, so that's cool. Now let's see what happens. Okay, the OSPF route is gone, so you know what happened. The route has an AD of 121 now, and the RIP route is being preferred. If we do show IP route RIP, there you go, 10110. So the command worked. Again, let's check it. The best way I know how. RIP route's already gone. All right, so looks fantastic, and you can also see that it's the same two routes we saw earlier when we closed Router 2's serial interface, but the AD has been successfully changed this time to 121. So you want to watch it in the distance command. That, can, that option can come in handy to specify the source, but you're not using the IP address of the interface that's actually the source of the route. You have to use the OSPF RID. Yep, surprised me the first time I saw it a while back too. Now, let's say that we want to change the AD only of the 10110 route. Just say for shins and giggles, that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go back to the OSPF config. We're going to take the distance commands off and then reopen that interface. So we go right back to where we were. Okay, interface serial 010, no shut, no quick save there. Do, 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 do. And it looks like everything's right back where it was. Okay, so there's our OE2 route. Tell you what, let's, uh, let's add some routes to that. We're just going to add two. I've got a couple of loopbacks up here on router 1, uh, 5111 and 6111, I believe. But I'm going to go into RIP on router 1. I already did all that stuff. Network, old habits die hard. I'm going to clear the routing table to give old Pokey a poke here. And there are the routes now, 5, 6, and 10. And we're hearing about them all from 3113 via OSPF. Now let's say that I only want to change the AD of the 10110 route. I want to change that to 121. And I want the other ones to remain where they are. Okay? So first things first, we are going to use that access list option at the end of the distance command we saw a couple of times. Now, what could we possibly use to identify 
a source of IP traffic. Yes, an access list. I'm just pulling 77 out of the sky. Use whichever one you like. And that's it. Now I'm going to reapply the distance command, calling the ACL at the very end and using the source option. Ooh, it's going to be a long command. Confit T, already there. Router OSPF. Distance 121. Rid of the source <laughs> routes. Wildcard mask. And now I'm going to use ACL 77. And that's it. So let's run show IP route OSPF and see what happened. You can see the distance has changed to 121 on 10110. It just hasn't updated. RIP hasn't updated yet. I forgot to do that, didn't I? Nope, we're up. RIP just hasn't cleared yet. Let's clear a routing table here. You're so used to instant gratification with OSPF and EIGRP when you go back to RIP for a little while it's like hey wait a minute what's going on here show IP route RIP and there you go the route to 10110 is now being preferred via RIP and the next hop will be 123.1 and the OSPF routes for the other two loopbacks the one we just added they're still preferred via OSPF because the distance command allowed me to use an ACL and the source so only that single IP, uh, excuse me, that single route that I indicated in the ACL has its distance changed. I really like that one. That's, that's pretty cool stuff. That's a great command to know. And so really we looked at three ways to use distance. We've seen distance used to change the AD for all routes for a given protocol on a given router. We've seen how to use distance to change all the routes coming from a particular source address, that being the RID of the sending router. And then finally here we saw how to change the AD for a subset or even a single route that we're learning about from a certain router while leaving the other ones alone. So three great options there for the distance command. And I seem to remember that there was another option. <laughs> there was indeed another option. We can use OSPF here uh, for OSPF distance. And I've got to set up a little bit of a separate lab for that. That's going to take a few minutes. So coming up next, we're going to see other way to change administrative distance, this one using the distance OSPF command.